morning, y'all. My name is Brenna Joyner. And I'd like to ask y'all, most of y'all per probably heard of um, a um, an MRI, a CAT scan, a and a concussion. But I bet you haven't heard of a Chiari malformation. Um, the Chiari, the CNS Patient Education Foundation overview of a Chiari malformation defines um, this disorder as a serious neurological uh, disorder where the bottom part of the brain, the cerebellum, descends out of the skull and crowds the spinal cord, putting pressure on both the brain and the spinal cord, which can cause many symptoms. Um, this is the tonsillation. The traditional definition is the cerebral tonsils extend three millimeters or more, more below the foramen magnum. This is the bottom part of your skull. Um, it was also believed that the size of the tonsillation directly um, was in direct relation to the symptoms. The new definition is still in the making because there's, this disorder isn't well studied. Um, research has shown that the size of the tonsillation has nothing to do with the sever severity of the symptoms. You could have a three millimeter um, tonsillation and it could be the most pain you've ever experienced and you could have a seven, seven millimeter tonsillation and you could feel nothing. I'm sure y'all are all wondering what causes the Chiari malformation. Well the scary truth is most doctors don't know. They're still studying it and they're trying to find tests to run to see how it's caused. There are two theories that have been that have been discovered, but they're only theories, they're not proven. What, the first one is genetic mutation. The back of the skull could be deformed, causing the brain to not fit. This, if you see in the first picture, um, this is your cerebellum. It's not descending next to the spinal cord, and over here, it's tonsillating, putting pressure on the spinal cord. The second, um, the second theory is abnormal anchoring of the spinal cord at the base, it, causing a herniation. This also could create um, pressure, causing many symptoms. Now, common questions about Chiari is how common is the Chiari? About one in every thousand people have it. This means that 300,000 people in the U.S. alone have this disorder. Now, who's the most susceptible susceptible to this disorder? It's not gender specific, and there is no genetic testing to see who is more susceptible. Um, another question is: Is the Chiari classified as fatal? It's not. It's not fatal. It's not classified as fatal, but the impact of long-term symptoms may have. Um, effect on life expectancy. Severe cases in infants and young children um, have been proven to be fatal. Okay, so the symptoms um, with the Chiari is different with every person. Like I said before, the length of the tonsillation varies. The, uh, the symptoms vary um, by the length. Um, symptoms range from trouble swallowing and speaking to sleep apnea loss of fine motor control, balance problems, weakness and stiffness in the legs and arms, numbness in hands or feet, and the list can go on and on. The signature um, symptom is a headache that starts at the back of your skull, and it feels like someone is grabbing your head and pushing in as hard as they can. It's caused by yelling, sneezing, coughing, or standing up too quickly. Um, you're probably wondering how this is discovered. Well, it c can be discovered on accident through MRIs. If you were going to view uh, damage from a trauma or maybe symptoms, you're having symptoms and your doctor just wants to check it out. Uh, since this disorder is not very well studied, there's no set um, treating. They don't have like, okay, if you have a Chiari, we're gonna do this. Um, each person's uh, treatment has to be different because everybody's case is, it's not similar. Um, there's three ways to go about treating it right now. Um, you have the wait and see, which is option number one. This could be the diagnosis was in, uh, incidental. You may have been getting an MRI for something else, and it was discovered during that MRI. 
Um, the symptoms aren't horrible, they're not affecting anything, and the doctor isn't positive that the symptoms are related to the Chiari. If you do this, um, doctors just monitor you year by year by a annual MRI to make sure the tonsillation isn't growing. Option number two is treat symptoms in individually. Symptoms are moderate and they don't want to do number three. Um, they treat the symptoms with prescriptions, breathing exercises, therapy, and some learn to just distract themselves from the pain. Um, most people choose to do this route. Um, option number three is probably the scariest. Um, you have brain surgery. The, um, this decision is, like, is made when the symptoms are severe and they're only getting worse. Symptoms are so severe that it's affecting the daily life. Treating symptoms individually didn't work. The surgery is performed to relieve pressure, pressure caused by the herniated cerebral tonsils. But the scary thing about the surgery is it's not proven to, to um, help in any way. Okay, so let's go back. So you're probably wondering why I care about this. It's really, you're probably like, Brenda, that's really weird. It's, that's really medical. So let's take it back to eighth grade, December. It's soccer season. Our goalie breaks her arm in warm up. So coach put me in goalie. I was playing forward, but it's fine. Um, in the first half, I dove and saved, a, caught a ball and I saved it. But when I caught the ball, I rolled over it, hit my head on the ground, and the girl that shot it was running through and cleated the back of my head. So, and the result was a major concussion that took me out of school for a few months. I stayed in my room for about a week and a half with the lights off and no technology, just sleeping, trying to recover. Um, I lost memory of a couple weeks from either side of the injury, like before and then after. So, and I noticed that things that had been easy, like studying, were a lot harder after the injury. But I just rolled with it, because I just thought, okay, whatever. So fast forward to homecoming year, or homecoming sophomore year. I'd had horrible headaches since I was little, but, but they got worse. I was having memory issues and weird muscle things happening. So my parents took me back to my concussion specialist. And he did an impact test. Um, to see if I just had another concussion, and I scored lower than I did when I had got cleated. So, um, it, that day was homecoming, and he told me he didn't want me to do anything, and I'm a cheerleader, and I had to perform. So I talked him into letting me perform, but that was it. I had to go get an MRI, and I was to do nothing until we got the results. A week later at the follow-up, everything changed. At the follow-up, I was diagnosed um, a Chiari malformation with a dual seven mil millimeter tonsillation. And this picture is actually a seven millimeter, right there. Um, so I was referred to a specialist at Cook's Children. And keep in mind, my parents are freaking out because they think, wow, Brenda's gonna have to have brain surgery. This is awesome. And I was, I honestly didn't know what was going on. I didn't know why people were freaking out. It just, I was cool with it. So meanwhile, I was oblivious. My parents were looking into it and freaking out. I just wanted to go back to sports. So when I was referred to my neurology team, I learned how to deal with my symptoms. I went to therapy, and I know how to control the pressure in my brain. And I take medicine to control it, too. So just because I have a Chiari doesn't mean I'm going to let it affect what I do. Thanks.